What's good everyone? With the recent release of First Descendant, I thought it would be helpful to make a video covering all of the standard characters available to you in the game. At this time, there are currently 19 total characters or descendants as they're called in the game available for you to play. 14 standard and five ultimate. We're not gonna go too much in depth between ultimate and normal, but just know that ultimate characters have a different appearance and they have slight increase in stats compared to their base variations. So when you're first starting out in the game, you have three descendants to choose from, Lepic, Viesa, and Ajax. Let's start by talking about each of these descendants. Lepic is your standard soldier DPS character. He's very balanced and very easy to use if you're a first time player of the game. Lepic's attribute is fire, and each descendant in the game will have a attribute that goes according to their skills. Keep this in mind because certain void fragments around the map that you do will have a certain attribute that only can destroy that. So for example, if I come across a void fragment that's chill, but I'm playing Lepic and my attribute is fire, I can't do anything with that void fragment. So I'm gonna have to leave that be. Now let's talk about Lepic skills. Lepic has a passive skill called Close Call that gives him a chance of surviving fatal damage during battle. This comes in clutch, especially when you're fighting the Colossals. The next skill that we have on Lepic is his grenade, which speaks for itself. You simply toss a grenade at enemies and it explodes. This is really good when you're fighting mobs and you're feeling overwhelmed. This can really help clear a room really quick. Next up on the active skill list for Lepic, we have Overclock. This is a buff, so it increases all of your skill attacks and it has a burn effect to your grenade, the previous skill that we just talked about, and Overkill, which is your ultimate skill for a set duration. Next up we have Traction Grenade. This one is one of my favorites just because I love the animation and just the, the concept of it. So you toss a grenade out and it pulls all enemies within range into it. And that you know that's beautiful that pairs well with other descendants. It's a lot of chaos that you can cause with that. Last up for Lepic we have Overkill. This is your ultimate skill. You fire a powerful shell at the enemy or as I like to call it a mini sun. You know the thing from Spider-Man 2 that Doc Ock was doing? That's what I would get reminded of every time I use this, but the shell stays there for a set period of time, inflicting constant damage on enemies. I try to save this for either huge mobs and or bosses. This skill also benefits from overclock. So if you pop overclock before using this skill, you're gonna get increased skill attack and you're gonna get that extra burn effect. So remember to pop overclock before using this ultimate skill. Next up on the list, we have Ajax. This descendant is more of your tankier build. Ajax doesn't have an attribute, so his attribute is non-attribute. Let's start with his passive skill. His passive skill is called Event Horizon. So he acquires void energy after using his skills, and when he reaches that peak, it enhances all of his skills and it'll grant additional effects to him. Moving on to the active skill list, we have Orbit Barrier. This creates a shield in front of Ajax and his teammates if they're right there. This has durability that's proportional to your HP and your defense. So the more HP and defense that you have, the stronger this shield would be. If it's enhanced from the previous passive skill, it'll also reflect damage proportional to your defense to whatever enemy is hitting your barrier. Ajax wouldn't be a tank build without some type of earthquake ability, right? Well, this is where Void Walk comes into play. Ajax will leap into the air, land on the ground, striking nearby enemies and also stunning them for a brief period. If this skill is enhanced by the previous passive skill, the max shield that you have will increase for a certain period of time. Next up, we have Expulsion. I can't talk. Expulsion. <laughs> this skill strikes nearby enemies, knocking them back. So basically the force. <laughs> if it's enhanced, the knockback range and the max shield that you have will be increased. Last up, we have Hypercube. This is a 360 dome shaped shield. It works in the same manner as the first skill, Orbit Barrier where the durability would increase proportional to your HP and defense. So again, the more HP and defense that you stack, the better these shields will work. And if this is enhanced the same way as the other shield, it'll reflect damage proportional to defense to enemies hitting the barrier. Last up on our starter descendant list, we have Viesa. This is our resident crowd control specialist. Viesa has a debuffer role in first descendant. She has a chill descendant attribute, which means she uses her powers to keep enemies in place freezing them, slowing them down, crowd control, all that fun stuff. So let's start with Viesa's passive skill, Ice Spear. This creates an Ice Spear floating around Viesa's body whenever she inflicts enemies with the Ice Shackle effect, proportional to the effect stage. So Ice Shackle stacks. 
So every time you use one of your chill skills, active skills on enemies, it'll apply an eye shackle effect so you can keep stacking these. And the more that you have, the more spears that will float around you. The ice spear will automatically fly towards enemies and deal damage to the target and surroundings. Nearby enemies I need to specify. So the first active skill on VS's list is Frost Shards. This fires an exploding ice beam inflicting damage and ice shackle around the area it hits. So the ice shackle effect for this skill will increase by one stage whenever you hit an enemy and it'll increase by two stages if you hit an enemy by the exploding area. Next up on the list we have Frost Road. This increases running speed and shield and creates ice sheets on the ground where Viesa stands. When enemies come into contact with these ice sheets, they are inflicted with the ice shackle effect. Whenever enemies are hit by this, the ice shackle effect, it will increase by two stages. Next up, we have Cold Snap. This releases an arc of cold air in front, inflicting damage and ice shackle upon your enemies. The ice shackle effect increases by two stages if it hits enemies. Next up, we have Viesa's ultimate. Blizzard. This creates a snowstorm that explodes over time inflicting damage and ice shackle on enemies caught within it. The ice shackle effect here increases by 3 stages when you hit enemies and it increases by 4 if you hit enemies with the exploding area. So that wraps up our starter descendant list. Keep in mind you can only choose one out of these three characters to start with so you want to choose someone that fits your playstyle. Let me know which descendant you started with in the comments. Now you might be saying to yourself, Cam, these three starters suck. I don't like any of their playstyles, they don't fit me. How can I use these other legends? Well you have two options. You either use cash money to unlock the other descendants or whatever descendant that you want to choose. or you do it the free way by going through grinding the game and getting research materials and finally having enough materials to research your desired descendant. This leads us into the next half of our video where we're talking about descendants that you can only unlock doing research or by paying cash. First up on our list we have Jaber. This is a utility type DPS who uses turrets. So if you're a fan of turrets, this is your go to descendant. Jaber's descendant attribute is non attribute just like Ajax. His passive skill is turret sync, so your attack will increase whenever you have an assault turret and a medical turret both summoned at the same time. First up on his active skill list, we have assault turret. So like we mentioned earlier, this will simply summon an assault turret to attack the enemy. If enhanced, which we'll talk about in a second, it'll launch attack into a nearby area. Next, we have medical turret. So you can already guess what this does. It'll summon a medical turret that heals allies and also distract enemies, which can be big. If it's enhanced, it'll restore mana. Next up, we have multi-purpose gun. So this will change your gun into a multi-purpose gun, and if you hit enemies with this gun, your turrets will enter an enhanced state. So like we talked about earlier, if the medical turret is enhanced, it'll restore mana. If the attack turret is enhanced, it'll assault in nearby areas. Lastly, we have Jaber's ultimate called reactivate. This is going to recall all of your summon turrets and it will inflict powerful damage to nearby enemies. After using total recall, you enter an overhaul state where every turret that you summon afterwards already come in in their enhanced state. So that can be really big, really clutch when you're getting overwhelmed or you're in a boss fight. Next up we have this bad, I mean descendant named Sharon. She's a close range dealer, an assassin type melee dealer with the electric descendant attribute. Starting with her passive skill assassinator damage increases whenever you're attacking an enemy that is not currently attacking you so basically sneaking up on enemies or backstabbing them killing enemies with a skill in ambush state resets cooldown for active camouflage we'll talk about these later sharon's first active skill is called cutoff beam this attacks enemies with an electric blade to deal damage and inflict them with the electrocute effect. Basically a stun effect. You can't be an assassin unless you can go invisible. That's where this skill comes in handy. Active camouflage. She hides from enemies. When attacking or using her skills, the camouflage state ends immediately, regardless of the time remaining. When active camouflage state ends, Sharon enters ambush mode, which will increase the damage of her next attack. So you can go invisible, stab an enemy, and then the immediate next attack will be increased. Next up, we have impact rounds. This simply launches explosives forward from the arm to stun enemies. Lastly, we have Sharon's ultimate flash short sword. This targets enemies within aim and range and throws multiple knives to attack them. These knives will explode 
and inflict enemies with damage and the electrocute stun effect. Next up, we have Glay. She is a utility dealer who becomes stronger the more she gnaws on herself. I mean, if she needs somebody to gnaw on her, I mean, I'll know what. Now we ain't gonna. Glaze to send an attribute is non attribute, just like Ajax. Her passive skill called Thirst. This creates life spears upon killing enemies. She recovers HP and stores power of life when absorbing life spears. Glaze's first active skill, Frenzied, consumes HP to enter Berserk mode. So you can think of her as a double edged sword. In Berserk mode, long distance weapon attacks and penetration increase. You know, it sound like me in Berserk mode. It's back! Next up, we have Life Siphon. This deals damage to nearby enemies and restores HP. In Berserk mode, damage increases. In normal mode, damage inflicted by enemies decreases for a certain period of time. So while in normal mode, you get DR, damage reduction. And while Berserk mode, you get a damage increase. Next up, we have Increased Sensory. Increased sensory adds an infinite ammo effect for a certain amount of time during frenzy. Sheesh! And when in a non-frenzied state, this increases movement speed and HP recovery during which life spirit generation is increased. My god, that's godly. That's not even an ultimate. Last up, we have our ultimate massacre. Now this just sounds crazy. Let me see. Changes current firearm to massacre, adds additional skill damage during frenzy state, and inflicts stun effect on hit enemies. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting Glay. She's gonna be the first one I get. Next up, we got my boy Blair. He's a damage over time, AKA dot dealer, a chef who deals continuous damage and who manipulates fire. He gains energy by adjusting firepower. And you can already guess his ascendant attribute is fire. Blair's passive skill called Pit Master. This gives a critical hit damage increase when attacking enemies in burn state. And it also increases critical hit chance depending on the number of stoves in the battlefield. So basically, let Blair cook and he'll be strong. So let's start with his active skills. The first one up we have is Blaze Up. Spurts flame to deal damage to nearby enemies and create stove. Stove inflicts constant damage and burn effect to nearby enemies. So literally like a stove when you cook at, you see what I'm doing here. Next up we have Extinguish. So this will retrieve stoves in the battlefield and it'll restore your mana. Retrieving stoves increases defense for a short period of time. Next, we have Burn Taste. This spurts flames for enemies near the flames arrival point are inflicted with constant damage and burn effect. Hey bro, that sounds like heat. You see what I did there? For his ultimate, we have Deadly Cuisine. That sounds hard. Throws a large fireball for large fireball splits into small fireballs causing an extra explosion. Explosion damage inflicts burn effect and also creates stoves on the ground. Stove deals constant damage to nearby enemies and inflicts them with burn effect. That's big. That's real big. Next up, we have the poster child for movement and the game itself, Bunny. You're going to see a million bunnies running around in First Ascendant if you haven't started playing yet. Her role is a nuker and she has an ascendant attribute of electric. She deals continuous damage while sprinting, discharging electricity. The more she runs, the greater electrical energy she accumulates, allowing her to release this energy in a powerful shockwave. You're gonna see a lot of that in the game. So let's start with her passive skill, Rabbit Foot. She charges electricity when she's moving, which is why you see bunnies moving constantly, inflicts damage to nearby enemies when landing after a double jump. Moving on to her active skills, we have Thrill Bomb. This summons an electro orb to attack nearby enemies and inflict them with the electrocute stun effect. Next up, we have light speeding. This simply increases your sprint speed and it acquires more electricity. So you, you run faster and you gain more electricity because you're running faster. Next up, we have lightning emission. So this is moving around, deals damage to nearby enemies and it inflicts them with the electrocute stun effect. Lastly, for her ultimate, we have maximum power. This shoots out electricity for it to inflict damage. Damage increases in proportion to the skill duration. Moving on, we got our spicy mama Freyna. She is another damage over time, AKA dot dealer. She does continuous damage with her venom. She utilizes venomous substances produced by her body to trap enemies in swamps of toxins. And you guessed it, her descendant attribute is toxic. Freyna is one of the descendants you can unlock early while you're completing the main story. Starting with her passive skill called Contagion Links. This increases toxic skill power by the number of nearby enemies inflicted with poison from Freyna's skill. Starting with her active skills, we have Toxic Trauma. 
This will throw poison to attack target enemy with damage and inflict room zero trauma onto nearby enemies. Room zero trauma is just a damage over time effect. Next up we have defense mechanism. This significantly increases her defense and there is a chance of inflicting room zero trauma to enemies upon attack. So like Blair had a defense mechanism, so does Freyna. Next up we have decomposed poison. This throws toxins to form a toxic swamp. Enemies entering the swamp receive continuous damage and become inflicted with poison and venom soap. Enemies that are venom soap, they leave footprints around as they move. Enemies that touch these footprints also become inflicted with poison. So spreading that toxic nature all around the map. Last up, we have her ultimate venomous baptism. This will change your current firearm to venom baptism. Enemies hit with venom baptism bullets are inflicted with the room zero trauma, which is just the damage over time. Next up, we have our friendly neighborhood water bender Valby. She is a DPS character who moves around freely through her water powers. And after hearing that, you would think that her descendant attribute would be water, but nope, non-attribute. So let's get into her passive skill, water intake. Whenever she uses skills standing on water, she consumes less mana. Next up on her active skills, we have bubble bullet. This bounces a bubble bullet forward to create a small puddle where the bubble bullet impacts and where she stands. Enemies in the small puddle take continuous damage and are inflicted with laundry. Next up, we have Plop Plop. That's the actual skill name, Plop Plop. <laughs> Creates a large puddle where she is standing then dives in. Valby then pops out at a selected location in a large puddle. Enemies in the large puddle take continuous damage and are inflicted with laundry. Next, we have Laundry. Valby becomes liquefied. While liquefied, she cannot take her feet off the ground or use skills but she can move through enemies and her movement speed and defense increase. When moving while liquefied, she creates a path of water that deals continuous damage to enemies and inflicts laundry. Laundry inflicting laundry, that's laundry squared. And last up for her ultimate, we have Laundry Bomb. This changes her equipped weapon to the Laundry Bomb Launcher. When the launcher is fired, a Laundry Bomb is created, pulling in enemies inflicted with laundry and dealing continuous damage. So you inflict enemies with laundry while waiting for your alt to come up. Once you get your alt, you shoot the laundry bomb and it'll pull, it in. It'll pull all the enemies you inflicted with laundry together. So kind of like Lepix is what I'm guessing. Next up, we got Kyle. This guy is another tank type build. Bruiser is his role. He's a damage dealing tank who generates and manipulates magnetic fields. And his descendant attribute is non-attribute just like Ajax. So let's start with his passive skill, Experienced Technician. Kyle acquires magnetic force through skills. When his shield is completely depleted, he recovers shield and magnetic force over a certain period of time. Starting with his first active skill, we have Repulsion Dash. Dashes towards enemies, dealing damage and recovering magnetic force. Next up, we have Magnetic Bulwark. This creates a frontal barrier to protect against enemy attacks and you also recover magnetic force depending on the type of projectile that you block. Next, we have Magnetism Spurt. So whenever you're damaged, your magnetic force is reduced instead of your HP or your shields. And after a certain period of time, magnetic force detonates to deal damage to enemies around you. Last up, we have his ultimate Superconductivity Thrusters. This allows Kyle to fly and when landing, he deals damage in an area around his landing zone. This consumes all of his accumulated magnetic force and the damage dealt is proportional to the amount of magnetic force consumed. So the more magnetic force that you have stored up, the more damage you'll do. The next three descendants we're about to talk about came out on launch day. Next up, we have the guy, bro, the legend, Esimo. This is a DPS who handles explosives, so he attaches bombs to enemies and detonates them at the right opportunity. And his descendant attribute, Light Lepic, is fire. So starting with his passive skill, we have Adventitious Habit. So whenever your shield is completely depleted, you're gonna drop a bomb on the ground. Kind of sound like you're taking a dump, but you know. Moving on to his active skill, we have Time Bomb. This launches a sticky bomb forward. The sticky bomb attaches to an enemy or terrain feature on contact. So you can do some really cool plays with this. Next up, we have Blast. This pairs with the previous skill, so instantly detonates attached bombs. Bomb damage increases with the number of bombs you have attached, whether it be to an enemy or a terrain. Next, we have Guided Landmine. 
This places a guided landmine at current location. Once placed, the guided landmine will fly to an enemy within its detection range and attach to it. Lastly, we have its ultimate arc explosion. So starts moving forward fast, on collision with an enemy while charging, inflicts knockback. When the movement ends, deals damage to nearby enemies and removes buffs from them. After the skill ends, SMO enters a madness state. Moving on, we have our support role character Enzo. He's a supporter who uses supply drones. So he commands the battlefield by supplying ammo to allies while launching long range attacks with drones at the same time. His descendant attribute is non-attribute. So let's start with his passive, shoot support. This grants fire support to allies within an area around Enzo, increasing their max ammo capacity. This is huge. Because as you're playing the game, you're going to realize that you're running out of ammo a lot of the times. Especially if you're using like special ammo, but that's a different story. His passive is going to be huge for group play in the end game. Moving on to his first active skill, we have Start Supply. This summits a bullet supplying device at the designated location. Supplies bullets to allies that approach the device. The bullet supplying device can be used once by each ally and disappear when everyone has used it or its duration ends. Next up we have explosive drone. This launches an explosive drone forward. The explosive drone explodes on contact with an enemy or a terrain object dealing damage. Next up we have enhanced combat suit. This summons a shield recovery comms. When the shield recovery comms is first summoned, it recovers Enzo's energy shield by a certain amount. Then it continues to recover the energy shield through enhanced combat suit effect. Last up, we have Enzo's ultimate perfect support. This summons a small supply ship to Enzo and his allies. The small supply ship periodically provides supply bullets and grants perfect support to allies. The small supply ship attacks enemies in front while it is active, and when the skill ends, it fires a missile forward that causes a big explosion at its destination. All right, the last descendant on our list for the first descendant. Y'all see what I did there? is Eugene. He is a support descendant who primarily focuses on healing. He is a healer supporter who uses his select drones to heal his allies. His descendant attribute is non-attribute. All right, so his passive skill, stop overreacting, significantly reduces the time to rescue allies. Targets rescued by Eugene increases to max HP for a certain period of time. All right, so for his active skills, we have Solidarity Healing. This summons a recovery drone that attaches to allies to heal them. It recovers target and also increases their attack through an accelerant effect upon this missile. Next up, we have Restructure Serum. This fires a Restructure Serum for it, decreasing defense and inflicting allergy upon enemies. When attacking enemies with allergy, this heals nearby allies and grants additional healing to allies who kill the enemy. Next up, we have Stimulant Spray. This grants stimulation to allies. While stimulation is active, incoming damage is reduced and recovery is received when the stimulation effect ends. Last but not least, we have Eugene's Ultimate Hyperreactive Healing Ground. This heals Eugene and allies granting purification and immunity to remove and prevent debuffs. Additional recovery is based on the number of allies and enemies within range. Eugen is granted hyperactivity effect, increasing his attack and skill power. So that just about does it. We've covered every descendant in the game, from skills to attributes, you name it. Now, after hearing all of this, what descendant are you most excited about playing? Or if you've been grinding the game already, who are you enjoying the most? Or who are you grinding to unlock? For me, I have a few on hand that I want to get. I have Glay, Freyna, Blair, Esimo, Enzo, and heck, even Eugen. Because I feel like Eugen is going to go crazy in the end game. Y'all let me know who are y'all excited to play or if you're grinding, who you've already played. Everything. Just let me know. If you feel in the game, if you've played the game yet, let me know in the comments and we'll talk about it. As always, I appreciate y'all for watching. If you haven't already, like and subscribe. It really means a lot. And until next time, y'all, peace out.